Welcome to Land Academy. This is the cash flow from Land Show. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth and sell it on the internet really fast. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Joel DeWitt. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Hi. Welcome to our show. In this episode, Jill and I talk about... <laughs> Jack says, bring it back to the Sesame Street level? What the hell? Great show today, Jill. Let's take a question posted by one of our members on successplant.com, our free online community. Okay. Carol wrote in and asked, I'm having trouble understanding deeds. Um, is there a good resource out there? How, how do I get better at learning um, how to prepare a deed? Oh, that's a great question. You know, we don't talk about the paperwork part of this uh, enough, maybe. Well, mm-hmm. let's do it now. Okay. I mean, how would you answer that, Jill? You kind of, that falls under your hat. Um, it's, I can say this, it's so, it was, it was a hang up that I had when I started and, uh, I got over it. It's way more simple than, um, registering your car. Mm hmm. Well, my, my first thing is, um, Carol, get a hold of the last recorded deed, which is the vesting deed. So where do you get that, Jill? Well, my first choice is get it from the seller. <laughs> You know, because they often are staring at it. They have it. They should have it right there in their their fan, their file that they're talking to you about, and they have it, and they can take a picture of it, you know, text it to you if they have to, scan this it, This is Sesame Street it. level stuff, mm-hmm. by the way. So it's called the vesting deed. It's the last recorded deed, and you want to get a copy of that, and that's the easiest because it's free, and it's right there, and you're talking to them on the phone anyway. So if for some reason they don't have it, and you want to double-check it also, so you should be doing your homework. Next thing I would do is um, you got two choices. You can either go to the county, and some counties are great. You can see it right online, um, and it's for free. Check the ownership. And well, you know what's hard? You can actually shouldn't say that. You, the counties, you can check the ownership, but you can't get a copy of the deed. With our data and what we use, I can get a copy of the deed, and that's my go-to place. It's part of the data, the doorstep product that mm-hmm. we have. Yeah, I can get a copy of the deed right there and download it. It's so like $2.50 or something like then what? that. So then, now I've got the deed. So that tells me how I should prepare it. I can double, I can see grantor, I can see grantee, I can confirm that they own it. And now what I want to do is I want to copy and make a deed just like that. Staring at a blank uh, screen on the uh, you know Microsoft Word or whatever you, word processor you use, mm-hmm. you just recreate the deed. That's the answer. Right. So pretend. Exactly. Word for word, spacing, the whole thing. Yeah. And you want to make sure, especially, you know, the legal description, word for word, we're talking in detail. It might be long. Some are long, some are short. Mm-hmm. I've had a whole paragraph in there, you know, when they get into, you know, Mineral rights not carrying over and a railroad being involved. I mean, whatever it is, it's, you know, it's not scary. Just copy it word for word. It's right. And then just make sure, too, that you copy the the grant. The grantee is now the grantor because they're now selling it to you. Make sure you copy that exactly also. And then when it comes time to the grantee, now that's you. Yeah, and here's a couple of tips, too. Uh, mm-hmm. And a lot of people get hung up on this, and I, I pay close attention to it because... Uh, even seasoned real estate people get hung up on it because usually the title agent's doing it. Mm-hmm. So, um, the for some reason, um, people tr- are concerned about the form mm. and whether the form is correct. And so, there's not in most counties, not all of them. In most states, there's not one just one form. Um, the forms are really acceptable. Just about they're universal, actually. Mm-hmm. What uh, what the what the uh, the recorder will really really look at is what Jill just referred to. Um, the, if, if the person who's conveying the property on the old deed, the vesting deed, is different from the person who, um, you know, is if that if the grantee in the old deed is not exactly like the grantor in the new deed that you're doing, they will uh, they review that. Mm-hmm. I mean, like dot your eye across the T kind of review. Mm-hmm. The form itself, unless it's really really sloppy and messed up, they'll they'll accept that. But this is the takeaway on this question. I'm really glad that Carol asked this. The worst thing that can happen is that the recorder sends it back in the mail and says, you know what, this just doesn't work. Then you call them, 
and you can do it straight. You get it straight. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time, even to us, and it's no big deal. Oh, totally. And if you're super concerned about it, a lot of recorders, you can just send them the PDF, email them, and then and call them and say, hey, I'm real concerned about it. I want to do this right the first time. Can you just take a look at it? Mm -hmm. uh, if it works, I'm going to send it to you. If not, I'll, I'm happy to make any changes. And now you've separated yourself from every other dingbat who tries to send some stuff in and under the radar, mm -hmm. and then they love you. Exactly. If you really want to get something recorded at the recorder, send them some cookies. Uh, They'll record true. it on toilet paper then. Exactly. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Sticky notes on toilet paper. <laughs> That's how you do a deed, Carol. I got that from, from my attorney. <laughs> I love who it. Who falsely says that. To, he falsely says that to his clients because he's old, a lot older than me. That's hilarious. Oh, they record, they'll record it on toilet paper. I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's true anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. But then, and there's, and there's things out there to help you too, Carol, but you do want to learn how to do this on your own. This is a good thing to know. So good, good question. I'm glad you're working on that. We started a company that's not, we haven't really uh, launched it yet called Deed Perfect because the response, this question is so prevalent and mm -hmm. people are so concerned about it that we will, um, you input all your information for the deed. It's not up yet, but it's called deedperfect.com. For a small fee, you just input all your stuff and then for us, uh, it kicks back a deed, kicks a, out a deed that you can send to the county, or if you really don't want to have anything to do with it, we'll send it in for you for a different price. But mm -hmm. when we announce it, when we launch it, believe me, you'll hear about it. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions or you want to be on the show, call 800-725-8816. Jack says bring it back to the Sesame Street level, question mark. Mm. So Can you tell me how to go? <laughs> Jesus. All right, what are you going? Where are you going with this one? This is the deal. I Somebody know. said to me recently, "Can we just bring this back to the third grade level?" And I did. I mm -hmm. brought it back to the third grade level because uh, you hear that a lot. Talk to me like I'm in eighth grade. Bring it back to the third grade level. Well, in both, in recently, I, I've I brought it back to the eighth grade level, then the third grade level, and then I. Sometimes <laughs> it has to be kindergarten <laughs> level, depending who you're talking kindergarten, to. Kindergarten, and now we, we got it back to Sesame Street. Yeah, we did. It all had to do with... Preschool. <laughs> nothing to do with real estate, too. The whole topic was sizing a graphic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you see a lot of graphics on the internet. In fact, if you go look at some of our graphics on the internet right now, you're going to see a problem. They're not sized properly. So, um, And it's not the graphic that you size. And this isn't about graphics. It's just about sometimes you really got to explain stuff in great detail. But I will explain graphics very quickly. You, it's not about resizing a graphic. It's about resizing the canvas that it's on. So if you start to play with the, the uh, sizes of a graphic, you're going to stretch it out and it's all going to look silly. It's not going to be how it was intended. But if you uh, create a canvas and slap the graphic on it, it's going to look fantastic. So I, and I had to um, bring that back to the Sesame Street level. It's like math, you know, when you're, when you're in school, uh, it's hard to get, you know, either get it or you don't. So you got to stare at the problem. You got to think about it. You got to do it 150 times. Maybe you got to check YouTube to figure out how you, somebody else does it. But once you get it, you, you cross over that line, you, then you get it. And then it's just practicing uh, and memorizing the rules. And that's, that's a lot like computers, I think. Mm -hmm. So my point in all this is, you know, Maybe you should. Maybe I should start, Jill, at the at the Sesame Street level. Sometimes you do. You know, it's 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 interesting because we have so many smart people in our world. I forget. I mean, I don't mean to say that not everybody's smart, but there's some really brainy people around. But even now and then, me, I'm not getting it. I need you to explain things to me at the Sesame Street Vice level. Versa too. You know, I'm like, all right, what are you? Where are you going with that? And sometimes it's 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 not necessarily how smart the person is, but you know, in my head or your head, you might be three conversations down the road. You know, we do that to each other yeah. all the time. I'm like, didn't we talk about that? No, we didn't. I'm like, all right, you got to catch me up because I'm not sure what you're talking about. And I know I do it to you. You're like, um, did you have a conversation with yourself there? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you, oh, that happens all the time. Oh, yeah, see? It it's goes happening both right ways. now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I totally missed that. Where are, you, where are you going with that? I'm like, oh, yes, I guess I did. I need to fill you in. So, Jill and I were in the car together for, for several hours recently, and we were well, every time this happens, we kind of turn on YouTube and listen to TED Talks. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what TED Talks are, you got to check that out because it's really informative. And one of the TED Talks that we listened to was about communication. Mm -hmm. 
And she was a great speaker. And she said, you know, no one can communicate. And I agree. I mean, we're all bad at it is what she meant. And one of the things that she, uh, she said that I'll remember forever is that human beings talk at about 250 words a minute, but we can listen at 500 words a minute. So mm-hmm. we get bored. That's true. You know, it's like, oh, geez, speed this thing up. Or we start to think about the next thing we're going to say. Really what, what she's saying is we, we're not good listeners. Mm-hmm. So I think that if you can uh, bring it back to the Sesame Street level, and I don't care if you have to use puppets. You know, or be uh, silly little songs. Jill, mm-hmm. you want to still sing the song again? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Songs and puppets I to communicate sing. your point. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm having a, a video produced right now. It's like a funnel, no, like an hourglass. So if you picture an hourglass and um, at the top, like swirling down into a funnel, uh, hourglass is uh, a bunch of pieces of property. Like all the pieces of property, let's say 4,000 pieces of property swirling down. And then in the middle, there's an offer. They, mm-hmm. they get sent, and then on the bottom, what comes out? Like six signed offers for the price that you want. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to bring it back to the Sesame Street level about what this business is all about. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense to you, just me describing it? Mm-hmm. No, that was great. I don't I even think I told you I was doing that. Love it. No, it's, no that's good. Thank you, and thank <laughs> you for that, too. <laughs> it's one of the best things about our, our the way we do business together is there's you've got your things going on, I have my things going on. It's like, oh, that's great, wonderful. We like found, that. I find out more about what's going on on this show than anywhere else. That's true. And that's good. <laughs> yeah, you let so-and-so go? Yeah, we did. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, good stuff. This is a technical too. Two minutes of property investment advice from our 15-year, 15 15,000 deal experience. If you're stuck on anything, including IT or land or deeds, Check YouTube. It's free. People make money doing silly videos, and a lot of them have puppets and stuff. And I'll tell you, you can learn. I have never been stumped Mm -hmm. about how to do anything, specifically IT. As small as it is, somebody on there will do it, and uh, we'll show you how to do it. And I learned that way. I think Jill learns a little bit more by reading. But I, I like to watch somebody doing it. Hey, if you have any questions or you want to be on the show, call 800 725 8816 it's time for Jill's inspiration. Uh, this came from a call that I had this morning where I was um, we're here in California and I'm setting up a new internet service for us. And there was an issue. And you know what I really appreciate is the person on the phone and how they handled it when I finally got to a manager. And what they did that was so wonderful is they're not assigning blame or anything like that. They're just solving the problem. Yeah. And I, oh, I cannot tell you how love much this is going. I love that. So my big point today is don't walk around. If something goes sideways, it's not going to do you any good to assign any blame and walk around and trace it back to who was the problem solver, whatever. Fix it. Fix it and move on. It's so much easier. You know, that's, that's really what well it's said. about. Thank you. I just heard the phrase blame thrower. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious! I didn't, I've never heard. Where'd you that get before. that? It was on a TED talk in the car. Wow. Let's not, let's not get our blame throwers out. I don't even remember that. I love. I mean, wow. I guess it's just I'm showing my silly ignorance a little bit, but I, everybody's probably on, on the other end of this is saying, "Well, did you have you been, spent some time in a vacuum?" I have not heard that saying. <laughs> no, it's funny. I was listening to the same TED talks too, and I'm like, I don't remember that comment coming up. That's awesome. I think the whole show was about listening. And, oh, and you weren't even listening to the what she was saying about listening. Ah, it was a little <laughs> no, noisy in that environment, if I will say. It was taped to, together, <laughs> listening environment. <laughs> so but that's good. Blame thrower. Yeah, don't, don't forget about the blame. Mm-hmm. Just what good does that do? Nothing. Exactly. Nothing gets done. Uh, you're right. Let's just fix Let's it just and it move done. on. Yeah. <laughs> Because something else is going to happen 20 minutes from now, and then you, then you start to blame thing, and it's like, eh. I've seen so many companies get wrecked over, mm-hmm. like, you know how in high school you had cliques? Like, there were the dweebs and the nerds, and the we called them burnouts and rats. <laughs> like, the greaser, they're greasers. What did you guys call them? Uh, like, the guys in leather jackets that were causing problems for Well, everybody. the jocks. There were the jocks, and then the geeks, and the band kids, and stuff Bandies. like that. Oh, we didn't call them that. Call them rats. The yeah. guys that are smoking outside. 
That's funny. We had a sm- <laughs> we had a smoking section outside of our high school, and everybody who smoked, I mean, way underage smokers, like uh, freshmen in high school, mm-hmm. would smoke with the teachers. Oh my goodness. Did you have that? You know, it's funny. I didn't smoke, so I'm trying to think if I knew where I and when either. it was. But I don't recall. Was it a California healthy thing back then, too? I don't Probably. know. My parents didn't smoke either. Maybe so. it's a Detroit thing. I've never really been around smokers. This whole thing sucks, so you might as well smoke. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reason to get out of here for five minutes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Great inspiration, Jill. Thank you. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how we use information, that's me. And inspiration, that's me. To get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. Get there first with your real estate ambition. Yeah, some of the stuff that went on in high school uh, really cracks me up now. You know, I I hate to hear old guys standing around saying, yeah, we used to drink water out of the hose, you know, times are not different. (laughs) But that smoking thing in high school, I mean, you can't even smoke, like, anywhere now. They'll call the police. Yeah, it's a big that, deal. That's like call the cops over that. Right. I think if somebody was smoking in a corridor, that, you know, it's hilarious. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. we had rats, like the greasers. We had uh, geeks, dweebs. Uh-huh. I wonder so what the they jocks. have now. Jocks, bandies. The cheerleaders, the jocks. Uh, I don't know. That was funny. That's what were you? Good. Uh, you know, I was, I like to think I was under the radar back then. So I don't know, but I will have to say, I, I'll admit I, well, I was in band, but I was in percussion because I thought that if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be where the <laughs> cool people are. Were there any other girls playing the drums? Well, good question. As a matter of fact, there were girls playing drums, but I played, um, the, I played, I was xylophone and that kind oh, of a thing. The other, was, stuff. the other stuff in percussion. I was in the melodic part of percussion. It was very fun, but my that's point cool is hell. that's where the that's where the you know the drummers were the cool ones too. By the way, yeah, the drummers yeah. were the cute cool ones. I'm like I want to be with the drummers. So <laughs> that's how it works in rock and roll too. <laughs> so yeah, that's where I wanted to hang out. We had a lot of fun. It was really good. So mm-hmm. were you tomboy? Uh, you know that's, you are a little bit now. That's a good question. Uh, you know I was I was try I did preppy for a while. Did the I did the shorts and the socks. Um, I didn't, you know, I wasn't really a, a dress person, so I have to say yes. There were never bows in my hair, and I never, I was never a girly girl. So, but you knew I was a girl, but I wasn't a girly girl. So, I don't know if I was real tomboy, like, but I, I didn't my, skate. Our number three kid has a little girlfriend with uh, red hair, and I asked her about him. I asked him about her, and I said, what's the deal? She's, he said, just turned around and said, she's kind of a tomboy, so there's no problems. <laughs> that's and then funny. just like he, he was totally honest about it he wasn't joking and uh you know that's a perspective of a 13 year old that's funny. am i am i a tomboy now yeah oh that's I mean, cool thank you 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 know you have it all figured out joe you know when to be a woman you know when to be a girl and you know when to just kind of like you know what you do uh called boat hair <laughs> you know you know when it, you can get dirty man <laughs> Yeah, when I can get to, dirty. And I appreciate that. Boy, There's a lot of dirty. women that just walk away from that stuff. Yep. <laughs> I really, really appreciate that. I can get dirty and I'm not real picky about about where I where my our hotels. <laughs> yeah. Because if it's if it's gonna be somewhere fun like downtown Mazatlan, I wanna be a downtown <laughs> old Mazatlan. Seriously. Jill is uh, all about location, location, location oh, yeah. and not so much about, you know, what the walls look like inside or whether oh, there's mold God. and stuff. It was hilarious. I remember that. I really appreciate that, too. Wasn't that like an $80 a week? <laughs> Dude, we have some friends. <laughs> Jill has some friends. I, I met them through her that, you know, they're five-star and up. Oh, gosh. I mean, they, they yeah. call, when they stay at a hotel, and they don't care about the location, they want the thread count and the sheets and stuff. Yes. And these people are the nicest people in the world, but I don't know. It's bad. It's a I got a, <laughs> I've got my baby boomer dad's a little bit like that. There's some kind of separation of classes that... People that are a little bit older, they just want to make sure everybody knows. Uh huh. So funny. <laughs> I love it. I and they're both like that, which is so cute. It's not like one blames it on the other one. They each say, "Yeah, no, we have standards." I'm like, "All right, good for you." Both of our surviving parents have that times eighty. Oh my goodness. I think, don't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. My dad, to this day, I have to explain stuff to him. You know, he's, he's, uh, we were talking about this yesterday. 
you know, I grew up in a community outside of Detroit that was relatively um, very right wing and wealthy. And we're in a community in, outside of Los Angeles that's right on the water, just like uh, that community. And it's very wealthy and very left wing. And I think both sets of these people have the same, <laughs> a different version of the same problem. They just don't, you know, they don't listen. Mm-hmm. They've already made their mind up. And that's, that's sad. How do you learn anything? I know. And that's okay. Yeah. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to, oh, did I already do this? No, hey. you're good. <laughs> I don't know it's if we ended this the show. This is the after show. I we did end the show and this is the after it, show. All right. It, oh we did. Oh my gosh. You actually. What's causing this This today? is hilarious, by the way. We're, we're going to keep this in the show to run. <laughs> I know. Just to be like a big, big blooper. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property and try to use a teleprompter. We are Jack and Jill, and this was the Cash Flow from Land Show. We are the experts at acquiring property of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. Let's Let's go go buy buy some some property. If you want to get involved or you need more information about our profitable, niche real estate operation, call 480-467-0359. You just might get Jill at the other end of the line. Landacademy.com. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.